Uh, IPP, and one of the questions I asked uh, earlier at the beginning of this show was whether or not you know that, Ga that Ghana has over 30 or about 30 registered political parties. Some of them have been tagged as time wasters, but of course they won't agree with you. So I've been catching up with one of them, the IPP, their founder, Apalu, has been telling me why people like you and I, Ghanaians, should take them, parties like his, seriously. What is it that informs the decision to form small I would say tiny political parties like yours. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, we saw a gap and, uh, or lacuna in between the MPP and NDC. And we started to fill that gap. So that is why we came up with this uh, party. Initially, it was uh, Independent People's Party. Mm. But we changed the name now to Liberal Party of Ghana. And uh, because uh, MPP is championing something like uh, something like uh, the upper class, mm. and then uh, NDC is championing the, the lower Social, class. Socialist, yeah. more socialist. So we want to champion the cause of the middle class. So that's why uh, we are in the middle. So that's your new focus now? That's your party's oh, new been, focus that now? That has been our focus. So, 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 so if that yes, has already so been your focus, does it necessitate a change of name? Yes, because we change the name for people to know the ideological uh, view that we are pursuing. Because uh, some people find it difficult to uh, differentiate us between independent candidate mm -hmm. and independent people's party. So mm. we uh, always tag us independent candidate, independent candidate. Okay, so, so people mistook your the name, which the is name. independent people's party, yeah. for an independent yeah. candidate. So okay. We decided to uh, pick up a name that will suit our ideological cause. And uh, we are also a part of the African Libra Network mm. and also uh, Libra International. So that's why we pick a name or mm. we change the name to suit our ideological cause. And, uh, that's why we ended up with the Libra Party of Ghana. Mm. There are a number of schools of thoughts out there about formation of political parties, or small political parties like yours. And um, one of the schools of thoughts is that those of you in business, I mean, you own a company, right? Yeah. So those of you in business actually do it to put yourself out there to sell your business. That is one school of thought. There's the other school of thought that says that it, there's some kind of... Uh, electoral business that anytime there's an election you have the these smaller parties rally around bigger parties or get approached by bigger parties to support them and, and in doing so you get some money the other school of thought is that you do that merely for popularity where do you stand uh, actually uh, I don't buy into any of the three uh, I have, I have a, uh, the different course we have a different agenda we believe that what MPP and NDC have brought us to, we can do better than that. Mm. And we believe that we have a lot inside us that if you are given the opportunity to serve this country, we'll be able to transform this country because we see things differently. Uh, because the way we are going, we will not go anywhere. If you say the way we are going, how are we going? Yeah, because we are not doing anything to change. We are doing, we are doing the same thing over and over, and I uh, shouldn't expect any different results. So we think we need to change the course. We need to change the course. We need to start doing things differently. Mm. And that is why we came up with this uh, party, and uh, we want to uh, reshape or uh, rechange the course. Do you genuinely think that people take you seriously? I mean, you you have never come cl closer. Not even. I mean, um, PPP was formed way after your your party was formed, but they managed to get to, at least to let's say the third position in in, in the 2012 elections. Do you think people take you seriously? Do you honestly feel they do? Oh yeah, they do. Why? What makes you feel uh, so? Yeah, because uh, uh, where we've been going and where we're visiting and I uh, have an opportunity to explain uh, what we want them to have. It's like they are buying into it. You know, it, 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 it's a gradual process. It's not mm. something that you just start and tomorrow you are there. It's like uh, coming out with a baby. You have to take time to teach mm. him or her how to grow. So what would you say is the difference between you and someone like Dr. Parker Sindhu who was able to, you know, hit it from, oh, from get he has been He has been there before us. He has okay. been there before us. And uh, financially, he is very strong. So... I can, I can. So, 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 is it about money? Is it about how much Ooh. money a political party has that makes oh, yeah, them? Yes. Oh, yeah. How, how does that? How does that work? Oh, yeah. Because you see, 
like uh, promoting the party. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say something that. Say I mean, anything on this yeah, platform. You, know, you are free. On this platform, you, know, you are free to you say know anything. You know the media. Anything. For yeah, the media, for instance. Yeah, there are some places that before they carry your message or something like that, you have to give them something hmm. before they'll be motivated to do anything. Well, there are different. There are different platforms. There's a platform where you pay for. That I mean that. That, that's how we get paid. So there's a platform where you have to pay for if you want advertisement, etc. You pay. But there's a, the other platform where you, you, if you want to argue that you are being um, sidelined because you don't have money, that's different. Because the platform where you pay for, you have to pay. Oh yeah, you see, it's, it's not. Uh, you know, let me tell you a, a story. There was this program that we were going to have mm -hmm. and as a party. And we invited some guys from the media houses. Mm -hmm. And they agreed to come. Then maybe an hour or two before the, the whole program, mm -hmm. then they called us to tell us, oh, Charlie, we cannot come. Because John, uh, President Mahama mm -hmm. is doing something in the voter region. So they want to go with him. Okay. And uh, so we were even sure. Well, pre the president is the president oh, of the president. republic. It's fine, but you agree to, to come. come. And then they changed. Why did you mind. think they changed their mind? You know what happened that day? They went to a committee, they had an accident. Oh. You see, so. That's quite sad. I think one of them lost his life from time or something like that. Oh, I mean, that would be the presidential correspondent. Oh, I mean, but that. They agreed, you know, they agreed to. No, come to no, our okay, program. so let me explain to you how it works. Because I have been a presidential correspondent. Oh, okay. How it works is that. You have the president's itinerary, so you know what yeah. he's going to do, and you have to make yourself available yeah. to cover. Yeah. So his first point of call is Beautiful. the presidency. I, I, I got you. So perhaps they could have explained uh, or arranged for another reporter yeah. to come uh -huh. uh, we, for we, you. We felt disappointed, you know. So uh, because we realized that we are a small party, so uh, that is why they, they didn't mind us. Yeah, perhaps uh, you have not and made the, the, the impact. The soleil that you were going to get from. Uh, that assignment was well, well, bigger than Well, ours. if it's a presidential correspondent, <laughs> he wouldn't have had any solid. But oh. if you, you think they, they did not come to your assignment because oh, I, they... To, to us, that, that, that was the... You weren't going to give them the money. Understanding. That was the understanding. But you are now explaining to me. So that was the understanding when we had this. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one of those things. And then even the radio discussion appearances, mm -hmm. you know, like... Uh, you, are, you will not be given opportunity to send some of your people to mm. go there to contribute. That's because it's very difficult for people to take people like you and your party seriously, yeah. especially, and which is something we'll talk about later, when you keep taking sides. Oh, you see, that, that's something that people need to understand. You see, it, it's not everywhere in the world, you know. Maybe you're not contesting an election, or you mm. contest an election, there's a runoff kind of stuff. You definitely have to support one of the two, okay? Which is why I'm saying that a lot of people have said the formation of political parties like yours is basically for this kind of no, business no. because you don't do it for free, no, do no, you? No. It's, it's done everywhere in the world. Look at what happened with uh, Theresa May's party, with the DUC, okay, the uh, Democratic Union. You see, from uh, uh, from Northern Ireland. You see, they have to join forces with uh, Theresa May to form a new government. Okay, it's a smaller party. It, it happens everywhere in the world. Okay. It's, it's, uh, we, we form coalitions everywhere. So it's very because it's new, and because of the acrimony that uh, that is going on in this country, that is why people don't see why we should support mm. this party or that party. What's the membership of your party? Uh, at the moment, based on what you have on our database, we have about 28,000 people. 28,000 yeah. people across mm. the country? Across the country. That and is the, mm. what we have on our database. And what has been the source of your funding? Oh, the funding. Uh, actually, members have been contributing. How uh, much? Oh, based on what the person has. So they have been giving at uh, some kind of small I mean if you should put, put peg it as a, pe as a certain amount how much would that be the total amount how much do they support like on averagely oh actually I would say about 100 cities a month oh not a man based on what the person has depending on what we are doing okay point in time. so you rally your people and then they bring in money oh, yeah, to support they, to support yeah, the party know, sometimes too we go to uh, companies in Ghana here and we ask them for support and they do yeah.
Let, let's talk about your business. How has your popularity, not your TV, your radio, your name is out there, your business, you're a businessman as well. How has it impacted your business doing politics? Uh, actually, politics has negatively affected my, my business. How? Yeah, because uh, in 2004, I contested at Malaysia as an independent candidate, mm -hmm. and I was running a very good business then. And uh, just after that, my business collapsed because uh, some people ran me down on the radio, and uh, they asked me to not to even buy for me and all those kind of stuff. So how did you deal with the damage which has been done oh, at this yeah, actually, point already? Oh uh, yeah, actually, I paid everybody, but I couldn't pay all of them instantly because some people were owning owing the bank or mm. the financial institution. Which because. means that they had to bring that money before you can, can pay, pay everybody because else. when you collect people's money, you also want to lend it on to other mm. people. Mm. Because you cannot chase other people and just put it in the box. Okay. Uh -huh. So you cannot also go to the one the borrower and mm. say, hey, people need their money to bring their money. True. And because of that, I lost a lot of money. I see. Yeah, I lost How much are we money. looking at here? Oh, uh, in that around that time it's yeah. over uh, two million Ghana cities over two million yeah, Ghana cities yeah mm. so in today's terms it will be about 200 million cities so you still owe the people oh no i'll be able to pay everybody you've been able to pay yeah. everybody now yeah. now is that the sole um transaction is that the only thing that your company does oh no we're doing so many business at a time well we're running a school uh, that's a president college we're also running president properties okay uh, we're running uh, this president financial services and uh yeah i think those where, right now what do you do what does the business do yeah i, I form a new business and uh just yes, recently we're going to start producing conflicts 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 i see uh, uh, because there's no factory within the west africa sub region that's that's that so we want to uh, mm. Because you see the potential there. You see the so, potential yeah, so there. I want to do that. And uh, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an accountant by profession. Okay. So I run my own accounting firm mm. in the Republic of Ireland. I and, see. Uh, that's called Dobson Lovell. Okay. Yeah. Is your family, do your family members, uh, I, I believe you're married with kids, etc., do they feel embarrassed, you know, when you go out there on the political terrain, knowing very well that? You are going to lose because we haven't seen you come close. I mean, not even, not an inch close to the presidency. Do they feel embarrassed? Do they tell you to stop? Just, just stop it. Do they do not that? Not at all. They don't. Not at all. They are all behind me. My, especially my kids. They are all behind me. They are proud of me. I said, I, Daddy, that's what they keep on telling me. Said, Daddy, you see, even if you don't win, even if you don't win, mm -hmm. your name is out there. So they're happy that at least oh, the Apollo name is yeah, out there. Apollo, because you know, apart from that is Apollo. I mean, it's only here, yeah, Palo Apalo. So I'm trying to resurrect that family name. I and see. Then, yeah. How old are your kids? Oh, okay. They, they, the oldest is 25, going 26. And uh, the youngest is nine. So you have two? No, I have six. Six? Yeah. Three boys, three girls. Wow. And, and I'm, I'm blessed with these intelligent kids. And uh, one is uh, a headline. I mean, she's an athlete. Okay. And uh, that's Goldie. She was born in America. She's from uh, Tennessee. I and, see. I uh, have uh, platinum. Platinum is a your, singer. That's a, your daughter's name? Yeah. I see. Yeah, she's a singer. She's very good hmm. singing. And I uh, have uh, the, the boys, they all know how to play football. That's uh, Christopher, Kevin, and Gabson. I and see. And then uh, I have uh, David. Are they all in Ghana? Oh, uh, only one. That's Christopher, who is here now. Uh, he's currently schooling at uh, ICS, mm. uh, International Community School in Kumasi. But the rest are in Ireland. They are also all there. Which brings to point what everybody says about Ghanaian politicians. You take all your children outside the country, and you tell us that you want to improve our educational system, and you want us to take you seriously. Really? Uh, you have to, because, you see, I, uh, 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 I had Gifty. all my kids. I right. had all my kids outside. They were all born outside. Okay. Uh -huh. so, they, so they were not born here to school here. They were born outside. So if you believe in the system so much that you want to preside over it, you might as well bring them in. Yeah, that is why I'll be the best person to improve our educational system because what my kids are experiencing out there is something that I want to import and bring them here because it will help this country. Because I can tell you for a fact that 
the kind of facilities, the kind of teaching that my kids are enjoying out there. I think the, all other Ghanaian kids deserve that, and I want to bring that to Ghana. Mm. So if you give me the opportunity, that is why we now manifesto we're talking about uh, uh, incorporating entrepreneurship in our educational system from DHS to university, and then also uh, making it compulsory for kids from primary schools to university to learn programming and coding. Because if you look at the future jobs, mm -hmm. what it requires is uh, uh, programming and coding. If you want to get a good job in the next 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. we need to learn programming and coding. And I think uh, a country like Canada mm -hmm. is looking for about 100,000 uh, people in, uh, into, in ICT, with ICT skills. And Australia is looking at about 200,000, New Zealand, same. So, like, if I'd be given opportunity, mm -hmm. I would have prepared a lot of Ghanaian young guys uh, who are on the street, mm -hmm. maybe within two years, to pick up jobs in Canada and Australia in ICT. I because see. Because if you invest about, let's say, $100 million to train people in, into ICT, teaching them in Java, uh, JavaScript, uh, C, plus plus, C sharp, and uh, I have no these. idea what all of those okay. things mean, but you can yeah. go on. <laughs> yeah, but if uh, Python and all those kind of Ruby, Ruby Rails, if you teach them in these skills, I'm, I can tell you they can pick jobs anywhere in the world. I see. Anywhere in the world. And then demand for them is high. Is it? So to me, we have to think beyond what we've been doing. Mm. And then, uh, bringing new ideas to turn around this country. If you were to give Ghanaians a few words on why they should take IPP, now L what? LPG. LPG. LPG, that sounds like gas. Uh, Liquefied yes. Petroleum yeah, Gas. That's a, it's an acronym. <laughs> so LPG is an acronym. Okay. So, so LPG, Libra Party of Ghana. If you were to tell Ghanaians sincerely why they should take you seriously, what will be those a sentence? What would you say? I would say that I will be the person to solve our problems. If they give us opportunity, we will build internal capital because that has been our problem. At any time we need hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars, what comes into our mind is to go outside and borrow. But we can get that money here. Okay. If you are able to bring one million Ghanaians together mm -hmm. for each to contribute hundred dollar in the form of buying bonds or stocks, you are raising hundred billion, hundred million dollars. Okay. So if you get one million and they are contributing thousand dollars, investing thousand dollars together is what? It's one billion dollars. So we don't need to look outside, give them good incentives and then also build a solid task system. When you and have a solid task administration, mm -hmm. that is whereby people will be given the incentives to invest. And that is why people should take LPG seriously. Serious. Yeah, when they give us the opportunity, we will create the internal capital because that is what we are lacking. And when we get the internal capital, we can do our own things without relying. Do you seriously think you can go over NPP and NDC in this country? What, make, what gives you that hope? Everything is possible. Everything is possible. If God says so, nobody can change it. So, okay. Uh, I know I'll be president of this country one day. One day? Yeah. When you are probably how many years old? Oh, I'm just 47. So what you're looking at when you're probably 70, 80? Oh, no, not, not that. But how many I, years? I believe the next, maybe the next election, 2020. I mean, it does, it's not, that's not realistic. When we look no, at, hold on, hold on. No, if we look I mean, at, if we look at the election figures. Mind. No, if you change now, If we mind. look at, let's, let's look, let's oh. deal with the facts. Let's do, let's do it scientifically. If yeah. you look at the election figures, there's no, there's no indication that IPP, now LPG, will be able to climb the ladder. Let me, let, let me tell you something. Please. That is how you see it. Okay. But I want to tell you how I see it. Okay. Those who voted for NDC, mm -hmm. some changed their mind and voted for Nana Adudan Kwaku. Some didn't vote at all. Some didn't vote at all. Mm. So when they have the best alternative, those in MPP who are looking for what they want in me, they vote for me. Okay. Likewise, MPP, NDC. So let me tell you something. People like you, when I'm able to put something on the table for you to buy into, 
you vote for me. Like we are suggesting that we're going to pay child benefit and unemployment benefit. Every child in Ghana is a potential taxpayer. So okay. we are going to give them a child benefit. And okay. then people are also not working. We give them unemployment benefit. Just to put money into people's pocket to buy goods and services. Let's talk about ele election 2016. How many political parties approached you to join forces with them? Oh, actually, none. None? Yeah. How many did you approach? Uh, actually, I approached Nana Abidan Kwakopado. Okay. And uh, I spoke to him mm. that I want to support him because looking like uh, what he has, it resonates with what we have in our manifesto. Mm. Because our manifesto, the team was uh, IPP uh, election 2016, a new plan for jobs and wealth creation. Okay. And uh, looking like their manifesto, they had similarities. So we thought it wise to join forces with them and then he bought into it mm. and uh, we went together. Was this before you were disqualified or after? After. after. It was after. Yeah, after. Before then you had not made any approaches, no, no one had all. approached you. You were just doing your clean business. Yeah. Uh, and so they approached you with, uh, you approached them, he bought into your idea. How much did you get? Oh, not nothing. They didn't give me anything. Were you expecting some money? Oh, not at all. Not, not at, at all. all? Not at all. Because MPP, they didn't have money. At the time, yeah, they didn't have money. So even if it wasn't money, what what were your expectations? What kind of personal benefits did you think the you would get? The benefit was to see Ghana doing better. That was the, the drive. That was the motivation because I believe that if I support a, a, a worthy cause, hmm. I mean, it's not for my own selfish interest, but okay. for the benefit of uh, the Ghanaians at large. So that was the motivation. That was the drive. Were you, did you consider approaching the NDC at any point? Oh, not at all. It was only the NDC. But you have dealt with the NDC before, haven't you? Uh, no, not. Uh, the, the, the party that I dealt with was uh, PPP. That was uh, 2012 election. Okay. We supported them and uh, we campaigned with them. Mm. Uh, that was when Afarijan disqualified me. <laughs> so you, you decided to join forces with uh, Nana Kufuad, who is yeah. now a president of the republic. Yeah. Um, without expecting anything, you, say, you said that you're going to work uh, for, for the party's electoral victory. What would you say was your contribution? Exactly what was your party's contribution to that electoral victory? Yeah, the, the numbers that we have, we were able to bring them along. We asked all our members and our supporters mm -hmm. to campaign and hot vote for Nana Abidam Kwaku Fado, okay. which they did. How do you know they did? Oh, yes, because, uh, you know, when we went to Aflao, all our members in the voter region, okay. some of them, actually couldn't convey all of them. Uh, those of your media people who were there, they saw it. The large crowd that we pulled, mm. and uh, they so. all, we walk on the streets, okay? For our flag and everything, and we went to join the, uh, uh, this thing, the, the rally. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was, uh, I mean, a sign that we. That your people actually voted for. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Can you really place a finger on exactly what you did? I mean, some people will say they would have won anyway. Oh, actually, you can say so, but uh, we know we supported them. We voted for them. We campaign for them. Mm. Yeah. What are your expectations of the NPP administration? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm expecting that they do well because looking at the way they started, mm. I think they will do very very well. What is when you say the way they started? What what do you what are you referring to? Yeah, looking like uh, this uh, one district, one for three that they are working on. Mm -hmm. Now they've been able to mobilize about two billion dollars from China to support the cause, and uh, that is positive. And also, look like the one, uh, what do you call that one? One uh, village, one dam? No, not that one. Uh, the what? free... Free SHS. SHS. Uh, I think it's on right course. And uh, also this 3% VAT. That they have, You're a businessman. Uh, it's good for yeah. you? Oh, it's good. Because, you see, it's supposed to reduce price of goods and services. You see, and I, I've heard some people uh, talking against it or maybe trying to stop it in presentation. Mm. But I think it's the best. If if they mm. have been collecting 
the right amount of VAT, mm. yeah, if they have been charging the right amount of VAT, mm -hmm. uh, I think they will welcome this. Yes. I see. Yeah. Uh, Security-wise, a lot of people have uh, criticized the N N NPP administration about the beginning and how people were behaving within the party, outside the party, Delta forces, invisible forces, all kinds of forces uh, doing their own thing. Within the party, there has been lots of agitations as well. Do all of these things disappoint you? How do you feel about them? Oh, I, I felt disappointed in the first place about uh, what these uh, uh, guys have been doing, going around, uh, collecting people's vehicles mm -hmm. and cars here and there. It's something that I don't support. Uh, and also going to the courtroom to mm -hmm. free uh, uh, one of their members or some of no their one, members. Yeah. It was something that we should not uh, encourage. And, uh, I think I, I felt disappointed, especially Obri Abua, Obri Boahe, and uh, his nephew, uh, what is that guy, Abronye, you know, mm -hmm. they are all trances and all those kind of stuff. The way they insulted the national security advisor or mm -hmm. that's Kandapa or something like that. To me, it was appalling, and uh, uh, I don't support that. But uh, Nana Kufuadu and his team, mm -hmm. they managed to do what they can because you cannot go on, on a rampage. Uh, it's, uh. You see, arresting everybody, you know. So that's what uh, everybody would have done because they can't do more than what they've done. What well, well, if you say they can't do more than what they've done? Exactly, who are you talking about? Yeah, the president? You see, you, you can't prevent people from committing crime. But afterwards, when afterwards. the crime when the crime has been committed, yes, how did you police. expect how did the you police. expect that it would be dealt with? The police. But you know that there was political there was political implications. No, the so police the police have to, the police have to what? Yes. The police the, have to uh, be seen. The police have to be seen hmm. as uh, an independent. As working. Uh, yeah. That is the ideal situation. But you and I know that in this country, when every issue, every situation gets mixed up with politics, it gets murky. Then uh, we need to separate politics from. The security. In your view, did the NPP handle it that way? That's how NDC would have handled it. Mm -mm -mm. In your view, did the yeah, NPP? Yeah, they, they, no, we're not doing compar comparative analysis see, here. In your view, yeah. did the NPP handle after the crime had been committed? Did the NPP handle it? Administration oh, yeah, handle they, it they, properly? Oh, they, they handled it properly. Simply because they got them arrested, they sent them to court. And that's what they, they can do. They can that's do, they more, can more, do. More, more than that. So when you say the NDC would have done the same, the what, same what, thing, what were you saying? Yeah, what were you referring to? They would have done. They would have taken them to court. You, you see, even if you look at what happened at the uh, uh, Mills administration, some people paint even district, uh, district administration offices and all those kind of stuff. They didn't do anything to them. They allowed them to go to free. That was why. That is uh, Mr. Kofi Apalu there. We'll bring you that, uh, the, half, the next half of that interview um, next Monday in which he talks about the NDC, of course, and makes some very daring comments about former President uh, John Mahama. Right now, though, it's time for Sports on the Pulse.